All right, folks, in this exercise, I'm gonna teach you how to use motion guides. That means that we can take any symbol and have it follow any path that we draw. Check it out. All right, we're gonna start off simple, and here I have uh, FLA opened up. I have an arrow layer down here, and it has 30 frames for me to mess around with. Blank keyframe on frame one, until I take the arrow out of the library and put it to the left of the stage. Now, what I wanna do is create a path for this arrow to follow. So I'm gonna to go to the arrow layer, right click on it, and select Add Classic Motion Guide. And when I do that, you'll see that the arrow layer gets a little bit indented here, and it's under a guide layer that has this different icon of these dots and this little box or circle down here. I think it's a square. And now what that means is that I can draw a path in the guide layer that the arrow will follow. So I'm going to use the pencil tool to draw a path or a stroke, I should say. And I'm just gonna start drawing anywhere and do something like this, all right? And so I have kind of a weird little line here. I may decide to select it all and just smooth it out a little bit, all right? Get rid of some of the kinks, if you will. In order for the arrow to follow the path, I need to first have a tween in place. So in the arrow layer, I'm gonna to go to frame number 30 and hit F6 to add a new keyframe, and I'm going to then, I don't know, I could drag the arrow somewhere over here, and I'm gonna say right click, create classic tween. So now you have sort of what you expect of the arrow just going across the stage. It's sort of not paying any attention whatsoever to that stroke that I drew. Well, the reason for that is that we have to literally snap the arrow onto the stroke in the start and end keyframes. So the way we do that is you'll notice that when I'm dragging this arrow here, that little black circle shows up in the center. And as I'm uh, dragging around, um, I want it to snap to that stroke. And when I release, you'll see that it kind of jumps to the stroke kind of somewhere close. But what I'm going to do is this, I'm gonna turn on this little magnet here for snap to objects. And when I do that, then uh, as I'm dragging, it's going to snap, and the snapping works a little bit better. So in the first keyframe, I'm gonna drag the arrow over here, and in the last keyframe, I'm gonna drag the arrow over here. And now when I scrub through this tween, notice what happens. You'll see that the arrow follows that path. Now, it's always pointing to the right. If I want the arrow to actually point in the direction that it's going following that path, I'm gonna click on the first frame in the arrow layer, go to the properties panel, and the properties for that frame, I'm going to select orient to path. And when I do that, now you'll see that the arrow actually faces in the direction of the path. It's gonna get a little bit screwy over here, maybe a little bit, and at the end, since in this keyframe I had it pointing directly to the right, I need to also sort of have it manually face the way I want it to go. So I'm gonna use the transform tool and I'm just gonna rotate it a little bit in the direction that I want it to be. And so maybe I'm gonna bring it right to the end, something like this. So here we go. We have the arrow now perfectly following that path. Now once the path is drawn, I can modify it so I can just sort of bend it around, do funny stuff like this, and now you'll see that the arrow still follows that path. If after I created the path, I realize eh, it's not the path that I want at all, um, I can select the entire thing and get rid of it, and then now my tween is gonna be like that, because there's no path whatsoever. So maybe I'll take my pencil tool again and draw a path like this. To some degree, we can do Intersecting paths animates pretty smart, but again, I've drawn the path. I still need to do my snapping in the first frame and the last frame. So in the first frame, I'm gonna take the arrow and drag it, and it's gonna boom, just sort of lock into that path there where that little circle is. And then in the last frame, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm not only gonna snap it to the path, but I'm gonna manually force it to face in the direction of the path. And now check it out. That's it playing backwards and now we have it playing forwards. Now there is a point in time where your path may get so complex that Animate really isn't gonna know what to do, but actually, wow, 
I'm pretty surprised it uh, <laughs> figured that out. Um, whew, I thought that was going to blow it up. Pretty cool. I do want to show you that if I do a control test movie or if I export a video or a GIF, whatever is in the guide layer does not show up in the final movie. Now, one thing you're going to notice is that it's kind of running a bit erratically, right? It's not too smooth. Well, that's because this path that I drew is really quite long. If you imagined it as a piece of string that I would stretch out in a straight line, it'd be like probably three times the length of the stage. So what I would suggest in this case with a long path is I'm just going to hit F5, and that's going to add layer uh, frames in both layers, if you will, all the way out to frame 60. So that gives the animation more time to play. So there we go. We smoothed it out a little bit. So the more frames we have, the more time we have to see the arrow going from point A to point B. And if you want to see the path in the final exported Swift GIF or video, or even if you're doing this in HTML5 and the web page, you can select your path and you can just do a Command C or Control C to copy it. And you can add a new layer. And in this case, I'm going to put it underneath the arrow and I'm going to select that first frame and Command Shift V or Control Shift V on the PC is going to put that path in the bottom layer. So if I turn those two off, you'll see the bottom layer has a path in it. And then if I do a Command Return to Export, then you can actually see the path in your final animation. Cool. All right, so now I'll do basically the same thing, but with a cool butterfly. So I'm going to go to my library, and I want to make sure I have the butterfly layer selected. And I'm going to take the butterfly out and just put him over here somewhere. Wow, he's pretty big. That's okay. Um, what I want to show you that's cool is that if I double click on the butterfly symbol, he actually has a nested animation of his wings flapping. All right, pretty nice. So I'm going to go to scene one. And since I believe he is a movie clip, that means that when I test this movie out, let's just do this. Um, you're going to have a butterfly whose wings are always flapping, which is pretty nice. So we're going to put the butterfly over here, and I'm going to decide that I want him to animate across the stage. So I'm going to right click on the butterfly layer and select Add Classic Motion Guide. In that Motion Guide layer, I'm going to click to make sure I've clicked on that keyframe there. I'm going to select my pencil tool, and I like to have the pencil tool set to smooth. Okay, that's going to give you probably the best results. And I'm just going to have a little curly Q sort of thing like that. All right, so there's my motion guide. And I'm going to now go out to frame 60. And we're going to hit F6 to add a keyframe, of course. And I'm going to put the butterfly where I want him to land. So I'm going to take the transform tool, spin him around a little bit. Um, but most importantly, I think I want to grab him. And as I'm grabbing him, notice how his registration point turns into that black circle there. Let's just put him on the uh, path right around here. And using the transform tool, I can we'll do what? Let's uh, rotate this dude around so he's face facing the way he should. And on the first frame, I'm also going to have to do the same thing. It doesn't matter if you do the, the uh, last frame or first frame in what order, but when you're dragging it, you do want to make sure you're not using the free transform tool. So I'm going to use the selection tool. And again, when I'm dragging, I get that black little circle that's almost impossible to see. And I'm going to use the free transform tool now to face him the right way. And once that's set up, I can do create classic tween. And now the butterfly is going to follow that path around and it looks awesome okay not too shabby one thing I can do is in the last frame I can take the butterfly and I'm gonna hold down shift and just scale it down so what's gonna happen now is as it's flying it's gonna be shrinking to make it look like maybe it's flying a little bit lower than the camera and you just get a nice cool effect there alright it looks kinda of like a real butterfly <laughs> what do you know alright folks so Crack open the follow along video and instructions. I really want you to do this exercise for yourself. You're not going to learn unless you do it hands on. All right. As a little bonus, I'm going to give you this ladybug exercise file. Um, it's finished. I just want you to explore it if you want, but it's pretty cool. It's got a ladybug following a path. And what I like about this is that it's got a bunch of filters on it to give you that highlight and shadow. And uh, it looks pretty cool. All right. So enjoy. 
Hey, what's up? Real quick, if you like the video, please consider giving a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and if you want to get notified when new videos come out, just click that little bell. Ding dong. If you got any comments, leave them below. I'll read every one and do my best to help you. Have an awesome day. No, 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 no.